Cheers, this is Little Dragon for Little Dragons Production with a special episode of Celtic Warfare Season 3, Episode 3. So today we're going to talk about the corpus uh, when you use it without a shield. I got a friend here named Michael who is going to uh, act as the uh, opponent so you can see how to grip and attack because we're going to look at some grappling methods and so on. So let's look at what happened in the main episode and yeah. Alright, so let's look at the techniques again. We have the uh, main draw cut motion, we have the sword casting blow, which is really nice with this as the sword is very front heavy. We can look at the bigger type of uh, corpus. Now, this type of corpus, the thing is, there have been found many types of corpuses, and, or corpi, I think it's in plural, and this type, which is narrower but longer, has also been found. It's quite easy to throw it forward without even thinking about the weight because it follows you perfectly. We're going to look at the smaller type again with the thrusting. Then you have the normal where you just go at the side. Then you got the the one that where you throw it forward. So. Even if you miss, you could you could actually use this as a quick parry or cut. So even if he, uh, the opponent attacks you, you can still hit your opponent's hand or deflect or block an incoming blow. The draw cut, sword casting blow, the normal thrust. The cast frost. Now we're going to look at how these techniques look with a shield against a, uh, an opponent and also later on look at how the techniques look without the shield where you have to grapple and do different type of things actually using this part of the sword as well. So now we are going to look at the usage of the shield and the corpus together. Just as a reminder, at the same time we are going to look at how it should look when you do it correctly against an opponent. So I will show you with my friend here, Michael, and he's going to attack me like a thrust, right under, cut, cut do a throwing thrust go underneath here there are lots of things to do and if you thrust I could either do that or I could go like that now if I do this that I try to stop it there the risk is that it can cut my hand so what is recommended is simply put with your shield either by attacking the hand or the stomach as those are the close target that can be taken without being too open. And this sword is quite nice at deflecting and pushing away your opponent's blade. So it's really nice because you could, even if you cut a little bit, if you hit the right spot, you could actually uh, get a good point. Or you could push, thrust. Or you have a risk that it fails and then you get a cut. So if you have a shield, use it. So now we're going to look at the techniques without the shield. 
and only with the copies. We're going to look at the smaller copies and the difference between this type and this. Because they are a little bit different due to the size. So now we're going to look at the techniques without the shield. So my shield is over there. I am walking and it's attacking. So what I'm going to do is to stop him right here. I could either hit him to make him drop it or I could cut right here, I could thrust, but this is only if I have the time to actually grip his hand. And I can't hold it too long because, yeah. But when you grip, the, the most ideal type of gripping is if you grip it right here, like this, because then he has a lot of hard time to actually cut me. He still could turn around and cut, not a deep cut or anything like that, but he will ruin my clothing, which I wouldn't like because it's quite an expensive clothing. Or he could try to thrust me, and then I would be in trouble, so I can't just stand here like I'm doing now. So, as quickly as you grab, you do something. So we're going to look at what you can do. So if you attack me again, you could either cut here, you could cut by the hand, or you could cut by the stomach, like this. Then if he thrusts you, then you can stop it right here, and thrust back, or cut by the hand, to, or hit with the pommel to release if you don't want to cut him just to show that stop what you're doing so but if you don't have the time what you can do is push it away because it's quite easy for me to push it away and then you could grab the by the blade if you grab grab it tightly you can't move it and then I can pull at the same time cut or pull and thrust. So these are really good at thrusting. So with smaller copies like this, it's more about getting close up and be quick. So so right now he wouldn't be standing, as his guts would have been right here. <laughs> Pretty. So. If we change into the larger type of copies, something happens. First of all, if you pull out your type of gladius, you have two different sizes then. They are both the same size, which means that he has a bit, a bit smaller type of edge, as my edge is curved. And as it's curved inside, it, it follows the... Sorry. It follows the cut fairly nicely so even if I just hit with the upper point I get a really deep cut especially if I throw it forward right now we're going to look at how to defend yourself against another opponent's sword with the copies if you attack me again see how I can flex without any problem Just move around, so if we do it this slowly, you attack. I push it down here. I push it down, and I can cut before he can cut me. And even if he cuts me, he's in a such angle that my clothing will be destroyed again. And this means I have to make a new clothing, but I don't need a new hat. Or that I could get, I could sew it back together or something. It's just a flash wound, you know. So, if he attacks me with a thrust, what do, do I do then? Then I push it up here. Then I could grab here, and I have a lot of opportunities. Even use his own sword and push. And even if he pushes, then I release. So even if he tries to cut me or anything like that, I have the bigger chance of actually winning than he has but if I do something wrong like get too close like here 
he can slide easily so try to keep yourself about here in the middle of the blade because if you get it to the middle of the blade then you can push him away you want to try to get to the weak of the blade or of his sword so you want to get right here because then you could push it away and even move it out of the way so you can thrust so it's a lot of thrusting with this actually compared to what you would think so it's a really good cutting weapon but at the same time it's really good at thrusting so there's the last thing that we need to think about and that is if I try to draw it now I haven't made a scabbard for this yet but I will make me so so right now I have it on the right side, some had it here, some had it here on the left side, depending on the situation and so on. But right now I have it on the right side because I'm used to the right side. So I'm trying to pull, he has already pulled his sword out, or drawn his sword out. I have to stop him before he attacks, because if I try to pull, I'm dead. So going back, if he tries to frost, I stop him by there, and this goes really quickly. So if I try to do this quickly, right now I don't want to actually hit him with the speed that I have right now. That's why I just mark. Because if I do like this, it's a really nasty hit. Even if this does not have a blade, you need to be careful. As this is very front heavy, it's almost like an axe with a larger head, which makes it even more menacing as it hits. As you can see, the copus is quite an effective weapon. Also, it's quite menacing when you don't have good defense against it. It's a very aggressive weapon. It's good at defense as well as offense. So that would mean that it's a really enjoyable weapon to use, even if you don't have a shield. It comes with its flaw flaws, uh, as it, like this one does not have really a guard, so sometimes your hands can get cuts and so on. Same thing with this. Some even had some protection here, but they, this weapon was mainly used to cut and to thrust and to chop, of course. So, as you could see, Michael's over there, resting a bit. Uh, he makes miniature weapons, actually the ones that I sold on the last time I was on a Christmas festival selling stuff. So, and you have seen them and you're going to see more of his products as well as you're going to see him actually being on my videos in the future. So, thank you for watching, like, comment and subscribe. As always, have a nice day. Cheers.